Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave, and today we're talking about the React Hook Use Effect. I've got Visual Studio Code here on the left, and on the right, I've got the Grocery List app that we've been building in this Learn React tutorial series. The link to the full series for the playlist is in the description below. And the console, the DevTools console, is open here on the bottom right. So with that said, I'm going to press Control B. I'm on Windows. It may be different for Mac and Linux, but that hides the file tree in Visual Studio Code to let us see all of the code. I'm also going to press Alt Z, and that wraps long lines of code like you see here for line nine. Now you could also make those selections up here in the menu. So if you're not sure of the key shortcuts, please do that. With that said now, let's import use effect right after use state, and that's from React. And after our import statement, we can begin to work with it. And one of the things we'll do is discuss about when use effect runs. So if I have use effect and I just type out the simplest version of it, and it takes an anonymous function, this runs at every render. So here I can put console log and put render right here and we'll save. And now we've already got a render. And anytime I type a letter, we'll get another render. And you can see it's just counting now in DevTools as we see here. So every time that the uh, component renders, use effect is running over here. Now, we don't want that to happen most of the time. Usually, we need to look at the use effect dependencies. And if I put in an empty array here as a dependency, this will only happen at load time. So I'll put in here load time, and let's save again. And we already got load time here as it re-rendered, as it showed the changes. I'll go ahead and clear the console and just load the app again to show this. And you can see we got load time. So if I type letters now in the search box, we don't get that count. It doesn't continue to happen because that use effect only runs at load time. So now we've seen examples of it running all the time for every render, and we've seen an example of it running only at the app load time, just the one time, because this array never changes, and this is a dependency. And so what use effect does is it looks to its dependency, and if the dependency changes, then it will run this anonymous function again. So now let's go ahead and look at something like the items, and that is our state up here, items. So that's our item list specifically. So not when we type a letter, the state of the items doesn't change, but when we add a new item to the list or remove an item. So let's put in the console log now, updating items state. And we'll save that, and again, we see, I'll clear this console so we see only what we expect now, and that is updating item state. You get it once immediately when it loads, so use effect does run, and item state is set when the app loads, so that is accurate. But then anytime we delete an item, like removing pizza, now we get another one here, updating item state, or if we add cookies, We've updated the item state again. So now use effect is only looking at its dependency and it's only running this function when the dependency changes. Now that we've discussed the different times use effect may run, let's also discuss when it runs as far as in the order of rendering. So I'm going to put a console log statement here and I'll put before use effect. And I'll go ahead and copy this and I'll put one as you might guess, after use effect. And here I'm going to put one and say inside use effect. Now that we've got all three of those, I'll save and I'll clear this out and reload again just so we only see that. And look what we get. We get before use effect and then we get after use effect and then finally we get inside use effect. So let's discuss this. As you might expect, we got the before one first, but you didn't expect to see the after one second, probably. You probably thought this would just go in order, but this is not synchronous. Use effect is asynchronous in that regard, and it actually runs the code in here after everything has rendered down here as well. 
So if there was any change, if there was a need to re-render, such as me typing a letter into the search box, now we got before and after again that re-rendered, but use effect was not called into action because we didn't change the state of the items at all. So we'll only see this inside use effect when we change the state of the items. But for every letter I type here, every render, we get another before and after. Now that we have a very clear idea of when use effect is called into action, let's discuss how we can apply it to our application. And right now I'm going to set it to run only at load time again. And we can take this JSON parse where we're loading out of local storage and remove that and put it here inside of use effect. But I'm going to put set items and there we'll put in the local storage. So now at load time, we'll set the items, the state of our application to this shopping list that we have. But we need to go ahead and initialize use state with an empty array as well. Let's go ahead and save this. And now you can see our items are back. I'll go ahead and remove the console log statements. And this would be an ideal way to load this data in, especially if we were working with an API. But since we're working with this local storage, I have another idea about what we might do with our application. Let's go ahead and remove the shopping list here. And remember, this is a, a big thing to remember, you would never want to set the items inside of use effect if you had an items dependency, because this would essentially create an endless loop you would be updating the items, and every time that items are updated, use effect would be triggered, and you would be setting the items, and it would go in that round and round and round in that endless loop. So you would not want that. But right now, let's put our loading data back in use state, because this also works very well with local storage. And I'm also going to put a short circuit operator in here and keep this empty array. And we didn't have that before, but we probably should have. Let me save this. The use effect will be okay here for now uh, and discuss this for just a moment because if we didn't have this, let me remove it and save once again. I'll clear this out, reload the application, and let's take instead of the console, let's look at the application tab in DevTools. And here's our shopping list, and it's got three items. If we remove these items, we have an empty array. And that's fine, our application works and says your list is empty. But if we had never ran this application before, we wouldn't have this shopping list inside of our local storage either. So the new user that would come to our application would not have this. And now let's reload and see what happens. We get an error because we're trying to filter a null value. And this just simply isn't there to pull in to set the state with. So it's set to null. We need to put in that short circuit operator. Whoa, I got rid of the whole thing. We need to put in that short circuit operator and put in an empty array. So if this is null, basically if the shopping list doesn't exist, the application will at least have an empty array to work with. So now if I save that, now we have an empty list here and that's what we would expect to have. Okay, since we've had that discussion, now let's talk about what we can do in our application. Since we can load the local storage right here, let's go ahead and save the local storage inside of our use effect. And this needs to be items because it will be the current state that we'll be saving to local storage now. And any times items changes, we will do that. And so with that, we've taken out half of our set and save items. So now we just need the set items. I'll copy that and now select all these calls to set and save items and we'll just change them to set items and we can completely remove this set and save items function. And we should still get the same functionality that we've had. So I'll save this. Now right now, 
we have an empty value here for the shopping list. So we can tell our short circuit operator worked. We previously didn't have a shopping list, so it pulled in this empty array. And remember, use effect runs once at the beginning. So let me clear out the previous errors we had, and I'll reload again. Use effect runs one time at the very beginning. So it already went ahead and got that empty array value and it set it into local storage then immediately when the application loads. From there, everything should work as it did before. Bread, chips, milk, and let's look at our list in our application tab and there's our shopping list with all the items. If we delete the items, it's still empty and that should work. And even if we delete the shopping list out of here completely and we reload, now we get an empty shopping list and that's what we want. So we've really made our application a little more efficient by using this instead of loading everything at the beginning, we're looking at the state of the items and then saving our local storage to be pulled back into action next time. Okay, we've learned a lot about use effect today. There are a few more features that are a little more advanced that we could cover in a future tutorial. Right now, we're going to move forward with this project and in the next tutorial, we'll be setting up JSON server to mock our back end for our data API. And then we'll come back and use use effect to load data instead of saving to local storage. Hey, thank you guys so much for liking the video if it helped you get started with React. Also, I appreciate you watching and subscribing. It's helping my channel grow. Take care and I'll see you again very soon.